I have not wasted my life. <laughs> the subtle interference filled with risk and bad feelings was made to sail across. It is a weird admixture, the pretense of valor. Oh, should I call it mechanical? Or should I wait here, the skin over my being now healed? The world is angular. The world is covered in a softness. The dark lit soil is lit by a nine light chandelier. I have planted my suffering and left it. I trade my hope for an expression of stars. The plants sing a ballad in the mud after a snow. One piano teaches something to another. What I mean when I say I'm a poet. I found my life lying in the ruins of a pop-out book of some city. I rummaged through the garbage pails for fallen stars while street lamps seared my breath, chewed gray paint curling from walls until forgetfulness rustled like the blank applause of summer leaves, and I fell asleep in a library of lead. Outside, you shivered on a bench until a bullet from the moon splintered it into pieces and you were the alphabet personified, words echoing alchemical sands shifting beneath the sphinx, a discovery of iridescence in the images of ancient books while the motors of terrestrial habits revved past your parabolic exile with their golden batteries of sunlight. I often wonder if I will awake to a new day gleaming on its empty plate, trembling in the web of dull grace weaving its way toward me in that attic space after a dream, which leaves an impression burned onto a screen, like the one lit up before me now, a fragile winnowing of thoughts where I find I am the clothes of my own illusion, a coat hung from a point of light on one of history's dark maneuvers. Meanwhile, your blood flows in time with the rivers. The places where you once walked smell of the shade. This one's called Bad Aliens. They're really here, spreading their ideas like vulture droppings, conniving to sow their brazen ontologies like bone-encrusted wheat along our field of vision yellowed like an almanac, stringing our thoughts into a syzygy until we cannot move them and feel instinctively that we never will. The few, the very few who escape become spokespeople for our cause. And although their identities remain unknown to even them, surely they will turn a phrase or two that will make the bastards think again before they steal our fluids in the night, suck the breath from our livestock, tearing off their very flesh, leaving a metallic aroma in the air as if from singe mineral-soaked hair. The world is becoming a giant crematorium before our eyes. Next thing you know, it'll be your big toe shot up with morphine at your family reunion. It'll be your child slurping blood at First Communion. It'll be a havoc of suburban cannibalism bursting into flames at the mere suggestion of an accident. <laughs> Meanwhile, the flowers hang like open mouths as we walk around relishing our wisdom of refracted light. The neighbors lounge outside the warehouse playing cards, while inside, the aliens are at it again, warning the boy strapped to the steel table as in a dream that he will find his end in a myriad of abandoned minds. And no one will come to look for him, and no one will even think to, because by then, all will have been erased. By then, we will have forgotten him as we have forgotten the name of the druggist seeing eye dog and we'll go on with our house painting, and we'll go on with our affairs of negligence, and we'll go about with our heroics of tin foil, and all the while the aliens will be waiting for the perfect hour to land on the non-referential velvet of our lawns, bending each blade of grass perfectly to match the charred feathers of the baby chips still lining the barn walls from two Easter's ago where they probed our insides brilliantly for signs of redemption and were satisfied. The aliens are here, permanently confirmed to walk among us, and because they're here already, there will be no possession, no redeemer yet to come. Instead, a triangle in the sky reflects the sober landscape, 
a reminder that angles are the highest fate of form, like the beaten metal of shell cases stabbing the corners of the pulpy world. The imprints of their ships reveal a plastic sincerity, as if all along they were only here to help, as if stealing our children, their faces plastered permanently onto milk cartons, where it was an intergalactic feat worthy of a stellar bow. We know they hold the inevitable ace. We know they wear the hereditary apparel of extinct misty grasses overgrowing the footprints on the sepulchral cloth of the earth. We stand frozen before their badness. We are a smoky restaurant full of soldiers that can fly off the globe at any moment, leaving their beams to bisect our newest footprints with the mockery of some season's malingering death. The three-sided pyramid of the occipital can deflect only so much into the geometry of our collective breath. I would gouge out the insides of the sleep so big. I would start my own crusade if I thought I had a chance, but they're bad. They're bad for real. <laughs> and in the word bad, bordered by the flashing air, I see the wheat spin a numeral's fiery dance. And this leaves me with two questions. Why all this irony? Are you enjoying the view? This one's called Love Song. This dove edge solace, the spring rains, all over this town is light and forgiveness. I'm breathing through an untraceable phone and your spirit inches from mine sings. What kind of nervous integers course through these streets, vanity waiting on the other side? But in the ink daylight, things get verified, things get frail. The burdens we have chosen descend like fireflies, and skyward we go together. No happy, happy, joy, joy, but with the windows filling with rhythm, the snow falls far behind. You out of your chains like a scarf on the sea. Brother, sister, the American flesh of the dim notes, the limits sung a long time by lyric, I ask your thick ankles to walk through the night in the opaque bounty that lies thoroughly within. This one's called Compassion For. This is from a series I wrote. The human realities of the living are now as close to me as my own. Oh, see how dusty that plant gets when you don't clean it. The rippling day is a fabulous lesson. My pants are too loose, and yet, bon nuit, mes chérie. All over the whole neighborhood, your fluid legs move. You are all permission and flounce, and your stockings catch in the mere light. Perfection. Wholeness is what I see now in everyone I touch. That day when two men came in from the stream, wet, bothered, the windows were blackened, and the cats ran around. Rain came, but also sunlight, and the years of hard living dissolved. A blanket of verbs crosses the threshold. Poetry, you are mine, and I will go anywhere with you. A gap in the mind, a spangled street, my spine, perfectly erect now, chooses these words, yet it is as if I have no choice. Civilization Day. It is nearly always an excuse never to have done this, never to have done that. And it's easier to say, I have this or that to do, instead of simply, I am always in pain. It's true. If you look at it long enough, look at anything, it's true. And the suffering that seems to come from elsewhere, well, this is only the day, absurdly hanging its head. The day that takes the solar road past the eulogies that dream us. And it is sad, very sad, to think that the flesh is so stupid that it doesn't even care. Because vanity is a silver falling forward into life, with its tight jaws and expiating teeth, a garage to hide its febrile daydreams in, while it feeds on the burning that is besieged. And the false vows which destroy me, and with nonetheless carefully pronounce, crowd around to lick the sores of evening, 
while someone else pulls the lion from the thorn green sound. But today is a day to be civilized. It is civilization day. The heat rises off the table. The glass moves sideways. And I run into the rain of which I speak so familiarly. And I don't have to do anything per se. The northern lights still clinging to my fingers. Somewhere I live out my double life. Yet without the tomorrows hurling through the loops. And that which has frightened me is dragged over the raped earth into the whiteness of spring. Because time ends in the vagueness of legends, as my sovereign thoughts remind me that it is the light that defines us, suddenly seeking its own. That time I was so helpless, it rises up in the unmade sheets while my eyes go numb across the pleasant plant. Poetry is made in bed like love. Poetry is made in a forest. But today is civilization day, and my demolished dynastic cravings and the statements that her heir apparent say, it depends upon how well one rides a bucket into the saving grace of wind, and so it all goes on in the dangling of a mind. I could walk up and down these tree-lined street for hours and point out what I see. There are fetuses strung together underground like cans, infinitely regressing. There are burning bridges. There are other things I can't help anybody with. But today, oh, you know what it is. Today the sky opened up and poured out Kierkegaard and his quiet fire dressed my hair and somewhere I lived out my double life. Such is the inventiveness of accents. Meanwhile, I am living a life not to be believed with a nearness that hurts my eyes, a bird seeking successive autumns across the stinging snow. At other times I'll say, press the stop button, press it with the vexed exclamation of the noisy deaths that wake the world. Mostly I just sit around and watch the rain, a book of vowels underneath my elbow, and I work in this empty room towards some enlightened dawdling, listening for the drill that will fill the cavity of my heart, and for the fear that almost broke it open, but could not or would not make me fall face down upon those inroads of infernal mystery to that which has fully come through. And when evening breathes again into this kitchen, onto a stack of plates, I will lift up my candle and join with those who've prayed. I will still myself and wait for my portion of the brain food of my surviving days. Because today itself is civilization day. And though I walk in the valley of the shadow, and though I walk in the valley of the shadow, I have the right to be mortal, and I do what I have to do.